Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I'm Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! 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 I almost had to go off, off screen after that little cub just came out of the minute. <laughs> Wolf hey, you know what? He um, may be a baby wolf, but he's still a damn wolf, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, that was funny. <laughs> what? So this is—I have no idea. I just—I right. just got lost. This you is episode three moment. of the Sales Wolf's podcast. We're already in three. We're already on the third one. It is the third? It might be three starts. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wanted to go over real quickly uh, what the uh, the podcast is all about. Uh, so number one, it's about showing appreciation and support uh, to what is an underappreciated uh, person. It's the salesperson, and uh, you, you said on the first podcast, you know, you, when you when you're at a party, or you walk into a room, and people are saying, you know, hey, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You know, hey, I'm a lawyer. Oh, that's awesome. I'm a doctor. Hey, that's awesome. Engineer. Hey, I'm a, I'm a salesman. Ugh, God, Ooh. sorry. <laughs> it's almost like they're like, oh, I'm sorry. So are you working on something different? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. Like, oh, tough breaks, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, we all can't win. <laughs> <laughs> you fail in school? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is ridiculous because ridiculous. The, you know, salesmen, are, salesmen and women are, are what make the world go round. Nothing would so, be, no, no product would be made, no product would be shipped, no product would be consumed unless it was first sold. sold. Period. So that's the first task. And the second task uh, is to provide real tactical training, um, real value that you can take and put into use out in the field, uh, whatever that sales uh, field may be for you, and that you can actually um, use to, to better yourself and better your performance and better your sales and, and, and all for free. Right. And you know what, man? Some people are, some people are watching this and they're going, well, well, I'm not in sales. And they're getting ready mm -hmm. to click off this, not, not watch the podcast, and that would be a mistake. That would be. Because we believe... Well, we believe because it's true uh, that every single person is in sales mm -hmm. in some form or fashion in their life. You're in sales, right? Um, you you have a, a new little baby girl, right? Mm -hmm. Does she always want to eat her whatever that mm -hmm. you're trying to? No, you got to sell that thing, right? That's just about to say. Right? It starts out like that, yeah. right? Absolutely. We've got to set. You have to sell. If you're the, if you're the single parent, if you're the, if you're that doctor, that that's proud of who he is when he walks into a party or whatever, because that's such an accepted profession. You you know whether you're good at what you're doing, or you know whether people like you. You know whether you're mm -hmm. really successful at what you're doing, and it takes sales skills. Yeah. Period. Right. Absolutely. So this podcast, I'm gonna let Ty, uh, I'm gonna let Tyler introduce it because this is. Um, it's near and dear to both of us, right? Because this is where everything starts. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah, and, so, and a lot of these or podcasts that we're going to do, yeah, one of the two. <laughs> one of the two. So, a lot of the podcasts are going to be on specific, um, you know, very tactical things. Uh, like last week was on prospecting, and we right. gave some tactical advice that you can actually use. This one's going to sure. be a little deeper, I think, a little bit, a little bit deeper. Um, into really the mentality and ultimately those defining moments where you can choose one way or the other. So today, the title of today's podcast is Man in the Mirror. And, and I'm just going to read off because if I sing, you know, we, we'll probably get hit with some type of copyright. For sure we will. Because it'll sound just like it. We'll, so I'm just going to read off these probably, lyrics. Probably get hit with some. <laughs> Everybody that actually likes Michael Jackson yeah. will hate us forever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so if, you, if you look at the song Man in the Mirror, it says, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. And you may think that that's cliche, but it all starts there. Mm -hmm. And when it says man, it's speaking as in humankind, women and men, right? If you want to do something different in your life, it all starts with you. So it was probably three, come probably getting close to three and a half years ago. I was, I was kind of at that turning point in my life. Um, I had had some failures in sales. Um, I was a financial advisor right out of college and, and was extremely successful doing so. And a long story short, with a crazy occurrence, I, I was terminated from that job uh, and, and lost what, what I thought was going to be my career for the rest of my life. And 
But that kind of sent me down this spiral of one sales job after another to where I was ultimately scared to go all in. I was scared to really put a full effort into it because I thought it could just get taken away again. And, and that kind of transformed into also not being willing to go all in because I can use that always as an excuse for when I failed. So it's very easy to say, hey, you know, you, you got fired from that job or you didn't, you didn't succeed there. Oh, but I wasn't really trying. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was just, it was the easiest excuse ever. Just don't try out, just don't go all in. Yeah. That way you've got that excuse of, yep. just in your own head, not to other people, just, well, you know, it didn't really work out, but I wasn't, I wasn't really trying. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. really, I wasn't really my full effort. If I would right. really try it, I would have been fine. I would crushed have crushed it. it. Yeah. Um, so, finally. Do you think there's other people out there that lie to themselves on a daily basis I, about I, where they are? I would think I'm not the only one. I, I would have to say that's true. <laughs> I would hope so. So look, I lied to myself for years, yeah. for years, and I played the blame game, right? Mm -hmm. I came from poor, so I'm doing really good now. I used the, I used where I came from to 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 point to that and go, well, look, you know, I'm better than that, or I'm I'm doing better than my parents did, mm -hmm. and when when that was just an excuse to not actually do excellent, right? Yep. And and then. I, I played the blame game in jobs too, and I had jobs. I, got, I think I've gotten fired from every job I've ever had, except for the one at the bank. I actually, I actually um, resigned from that job, um, and uh, that's not easy to admit, right? If you're out there and you have a string of failures, let me just tell you: the one thing you haven't done that successful people do is you have not looked in the mirror and gone, "It's the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's your fault." Everywhere you were in life three and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and for me, six, seven years ago, it was at the bottom, I was at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? You know, and this is hard to admit, right? I had, um, I had knee surgery five summers ago, six, six summers ago, I had knee surgery. Mm -hmm. You wanna know who paid for that? Not you. Not me, you know who paid for it? Taxpayers. The government, yeah, <laughs> taxpayers paid for it. You know how embarrassing that is? Yeah. That's freaking embarrassing sure. to me. I understand getting a hand up, but I can't stand a hand out. I never wanted to be that guy, but I was in that position. My kids had to go to the doctor on, on the government, and I was blaming, oh, I got fired from this job. It put me in this situation, yeah. right? It put me in this. All these extraneous things were there, but, but don't we, at the end of the day, have to look in the mirror, and when you come to the point where you can absolutely look in the mirror and go, hey, it's your fault for everywhere you are in your life right now, good or bad. Good or bad, it's your fault. You came to that place. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly where I was. I mean, and, and it's the cliche term of just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. and that's what it was. It was just, yeah. it, and you said playing the blame game. It's, it's playing the victim. It, it was like, it was always this big victim card, you know, oh, well, I'm here and I'm doing this, but listen to all these things that happened to me. I was fired because of this and it shouldn't have happened and I had this great career and, and then, you know, this happened and this happened and this happened and it was always talking about the negative, which only, you know, is going to create yep. more negative. And so you're exactly right. It, it, for me, it was literally looking in the mirror. Yep. Uh, I know, I know it's, you know, figuratively, but I was literally looking in the mirror and I'm like, okay something's got to change yep. and the encouragement there and, and, and what's exciting about that is if if you got yourself into the situation if it's 100% your fault if you got yourself to where you are then you can get yourself Boom. out of it number and, one key you got to listen to what he just said if when you find that's the key to this mm -hmm. whole thing when you look in the mirror and you go it's my fault then what that does is that breaks the handcuffs off mm -hmm. Right. If someone else got me into this mess, if I blame my childhood, well, somebody abused me. I'm sorry if that happened. It happened to me. You can get over it. Right. So if 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 you blame someone else for where you are, it puts handcuffs on you because now you need that person to get you out of it mm. or that entity. I got fired from my job. That's why I'm here. You just handcuffed yourself until you take personal responsibility for it. Where are we at? Right. Absolutely. Drops the handcuffs off. That was a, that was a great point, Tyler. Well, it's just it's it's owning it. That's it. Yeah, it's it's just owning it. And, and until you do that, you cannot move forward. Uh, you cannot 
you, you won't change until you know, this is the first step submitting it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that. True. It, it really is. It's just it's just realizing you know I, I can stay in this season, and that's what it is. It's a season. It's not yep. the rest. It's not your life. It's we all go through seasons, but it's realizing that I am in a season right now, uh, and I got myself into it, and it's time for a new season. Yep. Uh, and, and when you make that change, I mean, I can't explain to you um, the it was almost the peace and clarity mm -hmm. and and motivation. It was like I was a completely different person. Yep. I started um, you know listening to self development things again and, and started feeding positive yep. stuff into me, and it was just it was a snowball. And that's and that's the thing that that I think is important for people to know is that. This isn't something where, where if you're in that position now, where you're in a in a low place, or you're, you know, you feel like you're at your wits' end, that this is something that's going to take ten years to recover. This can happen quickly, but quickly, it, it, it that the the variable is work. Right. And so when we say you got yourself into this, you can get yourself out of it. You can work yourself out of it. Oh yeah, and absolutely. that's the only way to do it is yep. to work yourself out of it. And, and whether that's that's working yourself through your personal development, yep. or whether that's literally working yourself like, hey, you need to go start working yep. harder. Um, you, the the variable is work. And people people don't realize when you say you can do it quickly. I'm talking about being on government <laughs> assistance for myself and my four kids, and and my wife, my mm -hmm. my and our family. Six years ago. And now I'm in the top one tenth of one percent income bracket in America. Mm -hmm. Six short years, mm -hmm. six short years that can happen, man. And that's hard to admit that that's where we were, but that's where we weren't. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what 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 was I going to do? My kid gets sick, and they got to go to the doctor. Yeah. And 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 it's good that we have programs like that to fall back on. But you should never be there, stay there, right? It shouldn't be who you are. Right. You may be, I've heard the difference said like this. Um, there's a difference between broke and poor, mm. right? Broke is when I don't have any money in the bank account. Six years ago, I was broke, but I was never poor. Poor is a disease of the mind. Mm. And that's why no matter who you are, when you're watching this podcast, we want you to take a look in the mirror and, and, and take the handcuffs off by taking full responsibility mm. by going, Hey, it's your fault. Everywhere you are right now, it's your fault. And it's funny you bring up the, uh, you said the uh, first step is admitting it, right? We were <laughs> laughing earlier, not laughing, no, but, yeah. but the uh, I had a saying that we we're going to talk about, and it's an offshoot from one of the greatest organizations on this earth, which is Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, it's God grant me this, the serenity to whatever they're saying yeah. is right. But this one, this one switched just a little bit, and it's uh, grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change. <laughs> the courage to change the one I can and the wisdom to know it's me. <laughs> is that not awesome? That is awesome. That's incredible. It's so funny, you know, when you hear, even when you're going through your self-development and you're reading books and you're listening to podcasts and, and, and people I can, I, I know, I know, I know, I know that in this moment, someone is listening to this and they're saying, man, this is great stuff. I need to show this to Tim. I need to show this to, yeah. <laughs> to, to Bob. Man, my spouse has got to see this, man. they got to change. <laughs> but it's so, it's so hard to, to, to see it in yourself and, and to, make that, uh, to make that change. And, and funny. another quote here uh, from the last lectures, it's not about the cards you're dealt, but how you play the hand. Uh, and, and that's ultimately what it comes down to, is that no one's... If, if anyone that looks like you has succeeded... Then you can succeed. And even if somebody doesn't look like you, <laughs> yeah. somebody may think they're vastly unique. But I'm here to tell you, you may you may be unique in the fact that nobody has your exact DNA or mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. But you can no no matter who you are, you can make it. No matter who you are, where you are, you can make it, right? Mm. By taking personal responsibility. And it's funny, it's not the politically correct thing to say that 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 money uh, can change things, or, or that money uh, can buy happiness, or that money uh, can help your relationships, and that money can do all these things. But but I can I can bet that six years ago versus today, uh, having the freedom and the flexibility and mm -hmm. the peace to where money is not a burden, where money is not a stress factor, mm -hmm. that you're able to put 
more weight in those other areas of your life, yep. like your relationships. I know for me that my relationship with my wife now versus three years ago is 100% better. And to say that it's the fact that we're doing a complete 180 financially has a big part to do with Huge. it because money is one of the biggest arguments that 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 husbands and wives have. Massive. And and when when money when you have the ability to to take a deep breath and and know that at the end of the day you're going to be taken care of uh, financially that that you're not literally worried about how am I going to pay my bills right. next month then you can start focusing on the important things like those yep. relationships and uh, with your wife with your with your husband with your kids yep. uh, because I, you're not so focused on the you money. know what man you, you you make such a valid point I used to be a self righteous self centered prick okay <laughs> and, and when I was that way this is one thing that I said I said. I said, well, money can't buy happiness. You know, I made the mistake of saying that to the wrong person. Just like, just like you said, I said it to the wrong person. I love him to this day because he said, he said, and he was wealthy. And he said, hmm, you know, you're right. And I went, in my self-righteous, self-centered, <laughs> selfish way, yeah, yeah. I went, hmm. And he said, you know what? How much of that happiness can you buy with poverty? <laughs> That's true. Hmm question behind the question yeah that is right the question so the question. so when I when he when he said that to me I went huh and so my, and, and I've talked to people like this too when we're talking about money it's funny I talk to people and they said they said well money's just not that important to me and I'm like that's because you only think about you because <laughs> you don't have any and, and you don't have it <laughs> it's, it's not that important to you because you only think about you yeah. that's it you know what uh, it, you know I've had people tell me this oh I only need so much just a modest amount here and I'm like is there no one on this earth you would help? You self-righteous, <laughs> self-centered prick. What, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, absolutely. Like, like, there's not an amount that's too much for me. It's uh -huh. too too much money's like too fast a car. It doesn't exist, right? <laughs> so this is this is not a valid uh, uh, story to tell in, in this circumstance, but it's hilarious. I remember Daniel Tosh, the comedian. He said uh, he said they say money can't buy happiness, but money buys jet skis. And have you ever been on a jet ski and not been happy? And he's like, try it. He's like, I dare you to try it. So he's like, <laughs> he's like, I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> try, to, try to ride a jet ski and not smile. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> and you know, you can make memories. I can make memories with my four little kids I, huddled around a, 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 you know, drinking a cup of water, huddled around a fire <laughs> outside that we, you know, in a tent. I could make memories with them like that. Or I could go, you know. I could go on a trip to Italy with my one daughter, just me and her, right? Mm -hmm. But it takes money to do that. Mm -hmm. And and the money is irrelevant, the memory is not, yeah, right? Absolutely. So anyway, it, it, we won't get into the money deal, but, uh, it's, well, I guess we did. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but you know what, it starts with you. It starts with your changing you. And you're the only one that can do it. You're the only one that can take the handcuffs off and the only thing that takes those handcuffs off is personal responsibility, knowing that everywhere you are is your fault in your life. And just taking responsibility for it, come hell or high water, and then getting yourself out of that situation. You know, it's funny, looking back at these lyrics, it says, I'm, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. That's interesting that it says that's where you start, uh, is with the man in the mirror. I'm that's asking it. him to change his ways and no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. That's right. So guys, with that, this is the third episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, we'll be coming at you next Friday. If you appreciate some of the information that you get here, then make sure you share it on Facebook, yep. social media. Facebook.com slash Saleswolf Podcast. Uh, we're also on SoundCloud now as well. So SoundCloud.com slash Saleswolves Podcast. Yep. And just share it. That's, that's really the best way that you can tell us, hey, you guys are doing a good job. And if no one shares it, we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, Saleswolves Podcast, Original sales signing wolf. off. Ow!